Hey, welcome back to Web Squadron, and we're going to solve a problem that someone had on the Elementor Facebook group regarding call to action or the CTA widget on Elementor. And the problem was that when you add an image in, there's not much in terms of customization that you can do with that. And I'm going to show you how we can customize it using a free plugin. And it's very simple in what it does, but it can kind of open the world to in terms of lots of CSS customization. And I know some of you are going, whoa, CSS coding, we don't want to go there. You know, we don't want to touch any coding. This makes it a whole lot easier for you. So just bear with me on this, okay? And that's what we're going to do right now. So I'm in Elementor and I'm going to just add in a call to action widget. So we're just going to type in C2A or call to action and it's just there and I'm going to drop it in. And as soon as I drop it in, and I'm going to modify this, but I want to just show you the problem first. We have like the space for an image across the top. We have header, you know, a subheader or text and a button. Great. Let's change the image. And I am going to pick this image over here, which is a 400 by 250 pixel. I would say that to really get the best out of this, it helps if you have a square sized image. So 500 by 500, 300 by 300, whatever. Just make sure it's a square. Anyway, we've got a rectangular image. And the first thing we have here is the slight problem in that it's not showing the full image. So I'm just going to go to style and I'm going to change the height of the image. Look at that. There we go. We can change the height of it. But we have an option here for image width. Now look, when I change that, the width of the image doesn't actually change. So if I go to percentage, it doesn't really do anything. And if I was to get rid of the height there, so completely eradicate that and put that back onto pixel, and now I mess around with it, it still doesn't do anything. So there is a slight worry in terms of, well, what is the point of the, the width there and how does it operate? Because let's just say we're using this for a team um, uh, a section on the website. So you're going to have a round circular picture of someone, say, and you put it in and as soon as you put it into this call to action, it is going to be huge because to see it fully, you've got to increase the height. And now all of a sudden, Mr. John Smith is now 500 pixels big on your screen. Uh, that is not what we wanted. So let's just get around that. The first thing we're going to do, I would say, is try and control the size of your pages. So or sections. So this section at the minute is going to be like a full width because we haven't set it to anything at the moment. It's not full width, it's box width, sorry. Uh, where are we, where are we? Section, section, there we go. It's a box width for the minute. But if you don't put a value in there, the solution I'm going to show you here kind of won't work very well. It's always going to start to adjust, and I'll explain that again later on. But what you want to do is let's just give this a width of, say, 800 pixels, okay? If you've got another column next door to this, you will adjust it, obviously. You might have 400 and 400. Go with whatever floats your boat, okay? So at the moment, this image is in the center, but it is looking humongously huge at the moment, okay? Right. Are you still with me? Good, good, good. Right. Okay. What we're then going to do now is put some custom CSS coding in. And you could go to the advanced tab. You go custom CSS and add your code in. But at this point, you're probably thinking, what the heck do I write here? What do I put in here? I'm not hot on CSS coding, or I don't like to go anywhere near it. And I just want the answer. Just give me something to do it. And there is a way we can do that. So let's just hit the update button. And we're going to go back a step. Let's go back to our WordPress dashboard. OK. And I've already installed the plugin we're going to use. And it is free, by the way. So I'm going to go to plugins. I'm going to click add new. And I'm going to type into here site origin. And it will appear. There you go. Site origin CSS. You can just type CSS as well, but you're going to get loads more plugins and eventually you will come across it. It's by Site Origin. It is free. It hasn't been updated for two months at the time of shooting this video, but it is so, you know, like skeletal and plain in what it does. I wouldn't worry too much about that. The site origin CSS. It is free. Once you've installed it, you go to appearance and there is now an option in appearance called custom CSS. You know, I'm sure your brain's going, whoa, what is this? 
So we go to custom CSS and then we get to another screen. And this is where you go, panic. No, don't panic. Again, you don't have to put anything in here. Do you notice the little eye of doom sitting over there? It is watching you. Well, it wants you to click it to view your website. What you do is you click that. And as soon as you click it, it's going to go to your home page or the very first page of your website, the landing page, whatever. Now, when we created this call to action example, I did it on a page called CTA. So I'm going to type CTA. If you start to click on your menu, it's not going to work like a menu. It will start to activate this plugin. So what you need to do is know the name of your post or your page that you're trying to change. So I'm going to type C2A. I click return and it's now brought me over to here. This is the page we created with the call to action. What I then do is click on the element that I want to make a change on. So I'm going to click it. Now, when you click it, sit back and just wait for about four or five seconds. Because if you click, you'll notice nothing much happened. And if you click again, nothing will happen again. Just click and wait. And after four seconds, all of this information pops up. I'm just going to move myself to be over here. Hello, I'm flying in the sky now. OK, now by me clicking on here, it's activated all of these areas. And most of the time, you won't really need to bother with any of these. The one you want to touch is the actual image. And it is a little bit tricky trying to go, well, is it this one? Is it this one? Is it this one? What I say you do is just move your mouse over each one of these. So if I go to background overlay, that is going to be the overlay. Because at the moment, when you hover over the image, do you notice it expands out towards you, zooms out towards you, zooms in, whatever. If I go over the background wrapper, that is still touching the image, but it's now not touching the overlay. And if I start to go over here, this is now going to be like the container and stuff like that. OK, oh, let me just click back again. So after a while, you will get used to which area to touch. I want to touch this actual image. So I'm going to click on Elementor-CTA BG wrapper, background wrapper. OK, when I click that, nothing much has happened. But the very last entry on there is now BG Wrapper. Because if I was still on the overlay part of it, any changes I do would only touch the overlay. But I want to touch it before we even get to the overlay. OK, great. We have now, we're now definitely working on that area. Let me just move myself back down here. OK, right. Now, on the left hand side, you'll see loads of options. Text, decoration, layout. OK. I don't think I need to explain that very much, but if you imagine you've got a theme or you've got, um, and this, this works great by the way with themes that already have all the components built for you. And you want to change something, but the theme goes, uh -uh, not going to allow you to do that. Elemental can't change that for you. By using this, you could actually start to almost hack into it and change the theme. Who knew? Well, well you do now because you're watching this. So text, uh, so we, we click on the text, that's going to be your text area. We click on decoration, the background color, positioning and all of that. But we want to touch the layout. Now, I can see here that for this image, the position is relative and the minimum height is 442. Well, that's because we already touched the height. Remember when I went into the settings, I, I increased it so we could see the full image. But there's nothing here about the width. So what I'm going to do is just move myself back over here. I'm going to go over to, uh, uh, I'm going to ensure the position is still relative. You don't have to do this, by the way, but I just like to do it for just the way I am. And I'm now going to set the width to be 300. Now, as soon as I do that, it has now changed the width to be 300 pixels. The height is wrong, right? We've lost some of the left and right of the image there. But at the minute, that is 300 pixels. The other problem we have is that the image is now kind of left aligned, which is not what I want. I actually want it to be more in the center. I do find, though, that this tool isn't the greatest at setting things on the left, right, or aligned in the middle, whatever. You're going to have to put some pixels or values in to get it to be in the middle. But the first step is relative width 300. We've reduced it. OK, now I'm going to do the positioning. I'm going to click on the left. Um, position icon there 
And I'm now going to just kind of put in some value. So I'm going to go with, uh, let's go with 200. Okay, that's kind of in the center, but not perfectly in the center. And I think if I go for something like, uh, I think, uh, roughly speaking, I think that about does it. Of course, spend a bit more time measuring it out and being sure of it. So all we've done is set the width to be 300 and we've said position it 239 pixels that away, that away, that away, that away uh, for it to be in the center. Now I hit the tick box over here. It's just because we've done this, it's not fully activated yet. So I click the tick box, okay? Ignore this because I had clicked the wrong button initially. Okay, so what you then have is the gump at the top, it's elemental, blah, 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 and it ends in the BG background wrapper. The position is relative, we know that. The width is 300 and it is left to 39 in terms of how it's going to be um, basically just moved away from the border. What you can do now is nothing. I'm just going to copy this though just to show you something because this will now, when I save it, this will now activate on the website. Let's go to pages. We go to CTA. Okay, and look, it's already done it. Like what? Yeah, it's done it. That, that's that's it. It's done. But if you hadn't saved it and it was deleted, sorry, you deleted it for whatever reason, you can come over here, go to your pencil element thingy midgy, go over to the oh, what did I do that for? Go over to the advanced tab. Go to custom CSS and you could paste it in here. I mean, we don't need to because it's already activated, but I'm just showing you that is what you would do to basically set it to be 300 pixels. It's already done it for you or you could paste it here. But we have a problem. It's cut off a bit of the left and right. And the simple solution to that is just go back to style and just change your height now. So I'm going to go about there. There we go. It's in the center roughly-ish. It's 300 pixels wide and it's now 222 pixels in height because that's now centered and I'm now not stuck with this massive image filling the full width of that CTA. We're done and that was easy and it's free but one thing you must bear in mind. Let's now look at this in responsive mode. Let me just put this to about 378 or there yeah 380. Mobile mode, desktop mode sorry is fine. Tablet, it's fine. Mobile, it's gone all the way over there. There. And why has it done that? Because we said you must be 238, 39 pixels away from the left margin. We have a problem now. But again, dead, dead simple to get around it. All we've got to do, whether we've put the code in the advanced custom CSS tab, or let's just go back into our a bit of coder, so the appearance, custom CSS. So whether we've done it there or here, I'm actually going to get rid of it from him, put it into um, our actual page. Just because I like to be able to see sometimes what is happening on the page. So I'm going to go over here, advanced, uh, custom CSS, and I'm just going to paste it in. Boom. See that? Look, without it, we're back to the normal size. We put it in. Wonderful stuff. Yeah. Right. But like I said, on responsive mode, it is not going to work well. What we can do is put a bit of code in into here that says this only works when the width is a certain maximum or minimum value. So I've already popped the code in here. And I'm just going to copy it and bring it over here. So this code, and I hope you can see it. Let me just go back to it over here. Let's just increase the font. There we go. What this bit of code does right at the beginning, it is saying the screen must be a minimum width of 500 pixels. So anything below 500 pixels in width, okay, do not do what I've just said do. None of it. The width, the left margin, none of it. Leave it as it is. Because on a mobile, when you have an image that's really big, actually it looks better on the mobile to be the full width, otherwise it's a bit scrunched up. But when you're going into tablet and desktop, activate the width and activate the 238 pixels away from the left margin. Okay, so let's just go back to our page. So we've got the code and a curly bracket. And obviously we've got to add in another curly close bracket just to close it off. So remember that, okay? 
because you've, you have to put in another curly bracket at the top, make sure you put another one at the end as well. Right, let's now click update. Let's now go to responsive mode. Desktop is fine, tablet is fine, and the mobile is fine. Look, it's okay. And look, as I increase, look at the value over here. Okay, it's fine, 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 fine. And when we hit 500, it now switches to that. But to be honest, I'm struggling to think of a tablet or a device that is exactly 500 pixels. And to be honest, most of them are going to be like starting to hit the mobile or sorry, the tablet mode. But if you wanted to be very, very specific, so you wanted to put a size for, well, what happens when you've hit 500 and you're now below 600 or 700 or you are over that, you can start to put in particular coding. And, and I in here said minimum. So the minimum width must be 500 before the positioning, the width and the, height, the left margin activates. You can also put max. So you could say, do all of this stuff, but when it hits 500 pixel, don't do it. So just get your head wrapped around, do you want it to be a minimum or a maximum? So I've deviated onto how to set your responsive media sizing as well. But the basis of this video was the uh, Site Origin CSS plugin and how we have now got control over the height, not the height, the height was already there, but the width and sizing of the image for your call to action widget. Do I need to say any more? I don't think so. Like, subscribe, and see you soon.